Hey guys, Shane here. I uh, wanted to shoot a quick video, kind of do a channel update. Uh, we're going to do a subscriber giveaway. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers, so I'll talk about that in a bit. And also, I'm going to do a little work on this Coleman 426. It's a three burner stove. Um, I'll just work on that as we talk. I'll try to keep it short. But that never seems to happen. I get talking too much. So anyway, first thing first, I want to say thanks to the subscribers. Um, I do appreciate it, and special thanks to the guys that comment. I got a handful of you guys that leave a comment on just about every video, and I read them all. I try to reply to them all. Um, I don't think I've missed too many of them. So I appreciate that. Um, Let's go ahead and I'll uh, move you around and take a look at this stove. And we'll get started. So this is a Coleman 426D. Made in, let's see what the year is. If you ever want to find a year on your stove, look at the underside of these tabs. So this is made in 6 of 73. So what's 6? June? June of 73. So it's not real old. And as you can see, it's a little beat up. Looks like it was kicking around in the back of somebody's truck and got dinged up on something. And it's got a little surface rust. That'll all clean up. Um, I'll just leave bare metal on it. Uh, these stoves are great if you don't have one. And if you come across one, buy it. They quit making these, I believe it was 1990. My memory kind of shot, so that might be wrong. Um, so they're getting harder and harder to find. My wife found this one at the local thrift store. She paid 10 bucks for it. She bought this one and bought another uh, 413, which is a, the bigger two burner stove. So, like I've said in previous videos, I've got her trained pretty well. She she knows what to look for, and if she finds a, a good deal, she'll bring her home. So, ten bucks for one of these is a pretty good deal. All I'm going to do is get her get her running good, and I'll give her it away to one of my friends or throw it on Facebook classifieds for you know, twenty bucks, and that way I can make a few bucks and buy another one. The problem I'm having with this is doesn't have a whole lot of pressure. Uh, it pumps up good, but I think the generator tube is is just dirty. A simple fix. So let's go ahead and tear into that and see if we can get this running good. This does have fuel in it, so make sure you release the pressure. I just loosen the cap. This is your generator. That's what heats the liquid, liquid fuel and turns it into a gas. Oh, excuse me. And what this has inside is a, a spring and a long skinny rod with a needle tip on it. And that's what controls your pressure coming out of the end here. And that long skinny rod is attached to the valve here. So I'll take that off. So on the channel I started on YouTube in 2007. January of 2007. And I created the account just to show off some of the, mach the machine restorations that I've done. I only posted about a dozen videos. I picked up a lot of subscribers back then and then I quit posting. Yeah, that's really gummed up there. Quit posting for a while. What happened is I had a real nice uh, Canon camera. And my blind dog, Zoe, come flying into the shop one day and knocked it over.
and it hasn't worked since. A little while ago, the kids gave me this camera. It's just a little cheap Sony handy handy cam. It does all right, but I would like to save up for a, a newer one. That orifice looks a little gummed up too. This actually, well, I guess there's quite a bit of gunk in there. So you can clean this off just spraying it with some carb cleaner. Or you can soak it in some vinegar. And then on this dill here, you can clean it up with some uh, still wool. But you want to be real careful because on the end, that's a real thin piece of wire there. And that goes through your orifice in the, the end of the generator tube here. So you want to make sure you don't bust that. So when you get to the end, just run it right off. But I need to clean that up good. That's got a bunch of gunk. Let me see if I can find my old knife here. Let's scrape that off. So, where was I? Uh, so yeah, I did a lot of machine restorations and just kind of posted in the YouTube just to, you know, show them off what I've done. And then, you know, it took a couple years and didn't do anything. And I started posting a couple knife videos. But those have been taken off. I mean, that was back in the day when guys like Nick Wheeler were heavy in the YouTube and posting fantastic videos on making knives so I mean you could learn anything you wanted off of them guys you didn't need my junk on there then I started posting a few camping videos a couple Coleman videos so I wasn't getting real serious on anything And recently, I decided to start posting again. And in the meantime, I've lost just about most of my subscribers that I'd picked up. And since I started posting again, we've picked up just almost 500 subscribers, which is great. But I would like to get a few more. Hope I'm in frame on all this that I've been doing. one way that you guys can help you know is if you like one of these videos you know, share it on Facebook or if you post in a forum and share it there too as I do plan on monetizing I've got enough hours to do it but I don't have enough subscribers um, the reason I want to do that I mean if I only make you know a hundred bucks a year That'll buy me some grinding belts and stuff. And then maybe eventually I can save up and get a new camera. <clears throat> so let's see. Yeah, I started posting some blacksmithing videos. Um, posted the one on my... Uh, Hydraulic press, and that seems to be real popular. That's got a bunch of hits. So that looks pretty good. But I need to do more blacksmith videos, and I plan on it. I plan on doing some, you know, knife making videos, doing stock removal, and also doing, uh, you know, blacksmithing. I want to make some Damascus. Let me make some Damascus knives. I used to make a lot of knives and I got good money for them. Um, give me a sec, I'm going to go hit this with a wire wheel. Clean that up. And we'll be right back. 
Okay, I just went and hit that with the wire wheel and some uh, little brake part cleaner. I'm gonna brush through the center here and get that cleaned up good. So yeah, back on what making knives, doing some videos on that. Um, we'll do some leather working videos. Something I've done a lot of. I used to make holsters and and stuff and uh, sell them. So I've got a lot of experience working with leather. And we'll do some camping videos. Some camp cooking videos. You guys know I love my Coleman stuff, obviously. Here I am working on Coleman stuff. I also like uh, any vintage stuff for camping. But mostly Coleman. But I like the spring bar tents. Um, they're made right here in Utah, about 60 miles away from me. And they're fantastic tents. I just posted that video on the uh, that uh, canopy, spring bar canopy, which sadly has not got a whole lot of views or any comments on. I'm kind of surprised on that. The spring bar makes fantastic stuff. I love it. I'm gonna blast this real quick with some air. Feeling like this pickup tube is plugged up in here. I'm going to pull that valve out. Okay. Let's see if we get lucky. I'm going to mount this in the bench vise. Okay, I got that just sitting in this vise. I got leather liners so it's not going to scratch her up a bunch. I'm going to use a crescent wrench. I hate using crescent wrenches, but opening wrenches I got do not fit. Yep, yeah, fine. Hold on. Sorry about that. That was my daughter calling, and she had the same thing just happened to her with her camera. Her dog knocked it over. She's a she shoots professionally. And she got a nice camera and the dog knocked it over and broke her lens and got glass all over. So she's kind of freaked out. Holy cow, that's tight. These usually are very tight. Sometimes you can heat them up and break them loose, but it's best just to try to muscle it off. A little bit gunked up. It don't seem to be terrible. But we'll hit that with that carb cleaner. Blast it with some air. It 
Seems to be getting plenty of air through there. So maybe it was just a little piece stuck on the end here. See, there's a small orifice there. Oh, that's turning good now. Whatever was in there, it dislodged it because before that was hanging up on the up position. I don't know if you can see the end of that. So in the up position, there's a little rod that pokes through, closes that off, and brings the fuel through up here. And then the down position opens that up. Okay, we'll stick that back together. Let me go grab some good sealant to put on there. And I'll be right back. Alright, I got a little sealant around the threads there. Turn her back in. Be careful not to cross thread it. Okay, where were we at? Talking about some future videos coming up. Um, like I said we'll do some camper videos. That's something I really enjoy doing. I love winter camping, but I didn't do any of it this year. Okay, let me put it back on the table and we'll put this together. I did not clean that out, did I? Or the orifice. Let's see if I can clamp that back of that bench vice and twist off the end here. I'll be right back. Some of these generators will have another fitting here so you can get a wrench on both of them. If they don't, just do what I just did and clamp it in a vise. Be careful not to crush the tube. And then you can turn this tip out. Run a brush in the center here. Squirt some cleaner in there. Look at all that gunk. So I'm open with this, it was just kind of a combination of that pickup tube was a little dirty, the generator is dirty. Now we can get it running good.
blow this out. That orifice is not wanting to come out of there, so... And I'm going to go ahead and just hit that with some cleaner and blow it out good. Usually this orifice will come out of this fitting, but it's bound up in there pretty good, so I don't want to force it and end up damaging it. But I can see clear through the orifice now. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, the uh, kid brought her camera in and luckily all that broke was the filter lens that was on it. Everything else was good. So I got a little tip cleaner here. Um, these are for a paint sprayer. Let me hit the damn hole now. Holy crap. There we go. You can use a, a, a torch tip cleaner for welding. Just be very careful that you don't make the hole any bigger. Just clean out any dunk that might be in it. So, I would say that's good. Now, yeah, which end was which? I think this was one. Okay, got that tightened back up. Spring goes in. Screw that in. Wrong end, Shane. Come on. These are very fine threads, so be careful not to cross them. And snug it all up. This goes in next. Be very careful putting it in. Ruin that tip. Oh, one second. One thing I like to do is spray a little silicone spray down in there. Keep everything moving easy. What the hell? There it is. And then this you want to snug down, but you don't want to get too tight, or you won't be able to turn the wheel. So I kind of just keep snugging her down until it feels like it's starting to get a little hard and then back it off just a little bit. Okay, I think we're good to go. I'm going to have to 
clean that. Boil that uh, sill in there. Thought I did, but no, I didn't do this one. It was the other one. There's a little oil on it, but it looks like it's cracked. Maybe. Maybe not. It's just a rough area. I'll put a little oil on that and I'll keep working it. Be right back. Okay, I'll keep pumping this up and we'll get it in the stove and see how it works. Okay, we got her back in. Got air pumped into it. See if it lights. So you want the lever up for lighting. Okay. So you want it in the up position for one minute until that generator heats up. It's working 100% better than it was before. Before I just had a teeny, teeny flame. <coughs> so whatever we did, <coughs> we cleaned it up. This uh, check valve in here is stuck. Um, I'm gonna have to clean that. I don't think I'll videotape it because I did. Uh, I showed you guys how to pull them out, and clean them. Um, what video was that? Uh, was it 220, two, uh, 228 Pullman Lantern? So if you want to see how to clean those, how to take them out, check out that video. Looking good, there's no leaks down here. Got a nice blue flame. This burner here don't look like it's ever even been ran. Nice. I love these three burners. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've got an old 426B, I think is what I use for camping. And I've got a great big Griswold square griddle that I do all my uh, cooking on. The satellite burners even got good, good flame. The way these work, you'll always have more pressure at the center one, just the way these are designed, and then your satellite burners will be a little bit smaller flame. So it works good to put that griddle right here in its side. I'll put my coffee pot on and just keep my coffee warm. Right on. Not bad for 10 bucks. Okay, let's get that shut down and let it cool off. I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully all that rambling during that working on a Coleman made sense. Hopefully I wasn't uh, yakking too much. I know I do sometimes, which is funny because in person I'm very quiet. I, I rarely talk. So let's talk about the giveaway. Um, this is a butcher block brush that I made. I shot a video on doing this. So when we hit 1,000 subscribers, I will shoot another video. And we'll do a char finish like I did this on this one. Then if you guys will leave a comment. Um, I've got a program that will randomly pick a, pick a winner out of the comments. and. Whoever it picks, I will send this brush. These work great for blacksmithing. They also work great for cleaning your grill. So if you're not into blacksmithing, you can use it as a grill cleaner. Um, these work great for getting scale off of your blacksmithing, your blacksmithing whatever projects, whatever you're working on. So, all right, we'll end this video. Probably be a lot longer than I wanted. So you guys know the routine. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And if you click on that little bell icon right next to the, to the subscribe button, you'll get notifications when I post a new video. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.